update from the Redneck Garage. Well, it is a beautiful day here in Nashville, Tennessee. It's about 55 degrees. Almost feels like spring out here. So today on the menu for the Jeep TJ is going to be pressure washing the engine compartment and the frame. One of the things that I noticed um, when I started spraying it down with degreaser was there's some kind of critter living off in this engine. Because I could see footprints. <laughs> and I found a walnut and there's a couple acorns. So there was a squirrel or something living up in here. Which told me it sat for a while. But since I'm going to be pulling this motor, I would prefer to have it all sprayed down and cleaned off a little bit before I pull it out. Sometimes you don't have that option or that, that luxury really of having it cleaned off. But uh, if you get a chance and you got time to do it, then I always like to take pressure washer and just spray it really off well. It lets you find parts that are a little bit harder to see because they're covered in grease and grime and all that stuff. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to get my pressure washer out and we're going to get rocking and rolling here. Holy crap. Randy's here. Well, I, I drove up and I said, damn, what happened to that fine looking Jeep that you restored? Hey, calm down. And look at the bald tires and things are rusted out already and everything. Yeah, it didn't hold up well, did it at all? Oh. That's a different Jeep, Randy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I can't even get out of my freaking house. Look, FedEx came by today. I can't. Holy moly. Look at this stuff. You believe that? I'm trapped. Look at this. It's still open. What is it? I don't know. It's, it was open. Uh, it looks pretty neat. Oh, that's a fender. The fenders came in. And the lift kit came in from Rough Country. And then something else. Oh, the shackle repair came in. Speaking of Rough Country, have you seen your face? What about it? It's rough. Too. It is rough. You're, you're a jerk. <laughs> Would you like to come in and have some coffee at the Redneck Garage? Sure. Come on in. All right. Try to do a little before and after picture here. You can see how greasy and grimy like that valve cover is and around the intake, fenders. Um, we're just gonna try to get this thing cleaned up a little bit. So I just got some of this stuff out of the way and put it in the back of the Jeep. We got uh, the lift kit, which is really heavy. I got my frame repair for the back end. End, that's cool. Um, rock guards for the back side, that's part of the lift kit. Jeep was missing its back seat, and I found this one on eBay for 120 bucks shipped. So that's super cool, right? And that seat matches the upholstery in here, so I don't have to change anything. I kind of like the factory seats. So I'm going to shampoo them. I may have to do a little foam work on the driver's side. But for the most part, they're in decent enough shape that I'm going to leave them because the aftermarket seats are so much narrower. I don't really like them as much. Um, so that's where we're at with the seats. Well, the engine sure looks a lot cleaner. Got a lot of that grease and stuff off the valve cover gasket. and Not the gasket. Got all that stuff off the valve cover. Plastic looks a lot cleaner. Just overall, there's a lot less grease and grime on it. So when I start taking it apart, you know, it's just not so nasty. Um, so that's really the first step, and if you can, right? If you're in a position where you can pressure wash and get it all cleaned up before you start taking stuff apart, it just makes everything so much nicer and easier. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to continue on pressure washing the frame a little bit and uh, go from there. Looking good. Okay, so I've about done pressure washing for the day, and I tell you, man, uh, when it's 55 degrees outside and it feels warm, uh, spray yourself with a pressure washer and see how warm it feels. <laughs> it's beer time! I'm drinking a Molson's Canadian. Uh, cheers to you, Jerry, my Canadian friend. The engine is all washed up, and now I am ready to start disassembly on it. So that's going to be the next video. We're going to start taking some externals off and start looking at some things. Uh, I did pull the dipstick out and see if there was metal in the oil, and there's no oil on the dipstick. So that's a bad sign. Usually it either got burned or they ran it without oil. Maybe that's what caused it. But that's I'm kind of with everybody else. I kind of want to know what made this engine uh, go boom. Uh, David from the Redneck Garage, keep turning wrenches.